Twitch. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today, today is is June twenty seventh, twenty twenty one, and uh, originally we had scheduled in a live stream where we we're gonna grade some comic books, take offers on the comic books and anything that we didn't end up selling we're gonna list on ebay or didn't get offers for or i didn't accept the offers for however way it was gonna work this this was gonna be our first time trying this thing right i wouldn't say it was gonna be an open auction it was gonna be me grading comic books and to to sell them and if anybody came in with a reasonable offer done sold <laughs> do it that way right get rid of the ebay middleman and in a sense so hopefully people can get their comics a uh, little bit cheaper because ebay's cut is not there as well as uh, it goes uh to people that are watching the live stream so it'd be it'd be a pretty cool idea to do and some people uh mentioned that it would be fun to do and i think it would be super fun to do however it is crazy hot where i am right now west coast of canada we're hitting like this has got to be record breaking uh, 30 mid 30 in the sun you're like 40 plus <laughs> it's like crazy hot the the cool breeze that we have in my area usually is not there uh, we're getting a little bit coming in just now for the last three days so it being really hot uh everybody's sweating and i didn't think it was a good idea to handle expensive comics or key comics while it's this hot so we changed what we're going to do in this live stream and what we're going to do in this live stream facet how are you doing so happy you've gone live now midnight on sunday in manchester long live the weekend <laughs> long live the weekend <laughs> awesome awesome i hope you're having a good time brother i hope you're having a good time what we're gonna do in this live stream is read drug war trading cards from eclipse comics crack good afternoon how are you doing right and these are trading cards that were put out by eclipse comics in 1991 okay so drug war trading cards the straight dope on america's dirtiest deals right it should start focusing uh this might be a little bit too glary but i tried out the cards and the cards are focusing nicely okay so here's the box for it hey what's up everyone mc mike how are you doing i think i'm gonna run to the to the store to get <laughs> it's uh, something called do it brother i got my cold drink here right oh man looking forward to this me too me too i took a little i took a peek at some of these man they're super cool super cool cold beers nice now check this out this is uh straight dope on america's dirtiest wars dirtiest deals drug war trading cars from eclipse comics from 1991 The writer for this, check this out. Writers Paul Brancato and Bob Callahan. Now, Paul Brancato is, I looked this guy up and we'll see the intro for it. There's a little card in here that gives us the intro. Okay. But he, when he wrote this, he was a part of, let me find this, Did -did -did -did. Um, Symphony. Which symphony? Uh, San Francisco Symphony. And his name is his name is still there. Second violinist. I want to link you guys up in chat. So, and I'm pretty sure this is the guy, right? Because inside it says he was with the symphony. So this is the guy that wrote a lot of this stuff. Okay. And the I didn't look up look up Bob Callahan. Bob Callahan, I believe, is uh, known from the comic book uh, world. His name is very familiar to me. Ding Bobber, how are you doing? How's it hanging? Pretty good. And the artist is Salim Yak Yakab. Okay, and I don't know Salim Yakab. I didn't know him. And I looked him up, and he's written multiple books regarding America's foreign policy in the Middle East and Arab uprisings and stuff like this. And he is 
a professor uh, at UCSB Department of History okay and let me give you the link for this now this came out in 1991 I pretty sure this is the guy okay pretty sure this is the guy so this is like 30 years later I'm assuming that picture is uh, doop. that picture is an older picture okay that's what I'm assuming Eclipse Enterprises PO box right oops where are we PO box 1099 Forestville California 95436 995 US 1095 Canadian and uh, we talked about this when we we're doing Eclipse comics readings and Eclipse comics during a distributor wars in the early to mid 1990s sort of went defunct they went bankrupt and Tom McFarlane bought the rights to all of Eclipse's comics library for twenty five thousand dollars I believe in 1995 right so he has the rights to this thing I guess I don't know what this fine print says I couldn't read it with my glasses it was too small for me let's see if this is gonna work out what does that say it's way too small for me to read and we're gonna get glare off this so it's not gonna work I could bring in our magnifying glass let's bring in our magnifying glass hopefully we're not gonna be too noisy about it let's check this out let's bring in a magnifying lens let's see what the fine print says here see if we can read it come on come on focus what are you good for if you're not good for reading fine print oh 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 too much glare too much glare is this gonna work it's not working oh there it is text copyright 1991 paul brent Cato, and bob callahan art copyright 1991 salim Jacob. okay very cool and this uh, eclipse comics was one of the uh independent publishers that gave the rights to creators one of the early ones that came out right uh fantastic company Uh, I am eight months clean. Nice cider, no cider. Oh, I guess that might be the case. In the case, cider. Eclipse Comics crack says one of the best of the independent publishers of the time. So much quality came out from that company. Indeed, I've been reading some of their comics um, again, and some new ones that I found. And you can get these comics on the cheap. As crack says, one of the most fantastic comic book companies ever. Period. Right. Here's a uh, fine print information for this thing. Much of the information in these cards is covered in greater depth in drug war, corruption, counterinsurgency, and covert operations in the third world by Jonathan Marshall, published by Cohan and Cohan, available at a postpaid price of $15.95 from Eclipse Comics PO Box, 1099 Forestville, California, 95436 cool 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 Iran Contra scandal we will be reading those cards as well and I'm waiting for the coup d'etat cards to get to me but they've been in the shipping process for two weeks now I don't know where <laughs> like the tracking is stuck so I gotta contact the person this week to see if they know more information on where the cards are uh, someone actually on discord contacted me saying if I didn't have the cards uh, they bought a pack they'd be happy to send it to me so I might have to hit them up if I can <laughs> my cards don't arrive <laughs> if they're still open to it right Lions how are you doing hey Chicho how's it going I've had I've I've had a great day good vibes all around awesome 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 glad to have you here brother all got and I'm trying to make a year it's been very hard as like you said too much wheat gives you a belly gives you a belly beer belly you got a beer belly oh brother you got a beer belly you got to do cardio yeah make a year man uh, maybe two years right so gang we're gonna look through this these cards okay aside from that intro let's check this out we're about 10 minutes in we'll give people another five minutes uh welcome welcome everyone despair not go go off topic not to go off topic but did you see senator mike gravel oh 
what my gravel passed I didn't know that one of the few US politicians who I, who I can honestly say was a good person I believe so he was straight up honest man um, he wasn't bought and paid for he passed today I didn't know that I didn't I didn't hear that news uh, Ding Bobber Chicho I'm confused this card is full of legendary drug dealers uh, no this card is full of history okay if so I expect uh, es Escobar is in here uh, will be in there don't know too much uh, too many others yeah Escobar is in there and there is a handful of uh, drug cartel kingpins and stuff like that or CIA um, operatives right um, but it's not about the the main, uh, it is about the main characters but it's also about the history there is a fair bit of history in this it's pretty important actually this these cards if I was teaching history class in any high school uh, for a month we'd be studying these cards end of story right I, don't, I wouldn't give a rat's ass what the curriculum said we're supposed to do you could teach the high school curriculum in a matter of months and you would have like multiple months left over for people to go through these okay in fast in 1987 Paul Brandt Cato a violinist for the Van San Francisco Orchestra right yeah I was reading this last month yeah that's him that's him crazy right Elega Chicho no belly here great he keeps the belly away nice despair also um, I was fa oh fast car how are you doing uh, change my name to start my own streaming endeavor awesome despair let us know what you're gonna start doing brother and yeah uh, yeah you still got the sword that's right I forgot fast car is in the house or despair 2077 is in the house parallel parking expert hi chicho off topic question which crypto exchange is the best oh i don't know i can't tell you which crypto exchange is the best uh i i haven't looked into crypto exchanges uh which one's the best which ones i knew some that were weren't that good and they went defunct right crack just had a peak on ebay one set going for about ten dollars canadian plus shipping yeah we ended up getting these at sweet price crack we ended up buying uh, we found a whole not a wholesaler but someone that sells a lot of sets and we ended up buying 40 38 38 of these or 40 of these boxes right they came in eight packs eclipse calling eclipse comics was selling them in eight packs and we bought uh five eight packs so 40 of these boxes we bought for um a hundred dollar 117 dollars us or something basically it came out to around three dollars a pop for us we're gonna auction some of these through points okay we're gonna auction some of these through points so through at three dollars including shipping so it was a great deal uh, Bianca or uh, Bian or Gemini or Robin Hood well, I don't know I wouldn't go on Robin Hood that's for sure I wouldn't do Robin Hood I'm interested in the stream a lot me too me too uh, facet says Chicho Ronnie how you doing brother how is life despair good to be back brother been a busy uh, many months glad to sit down with some Chicho ASMR once again awesome brother three dollars a pop crack three dollars a pop uh, he financed the project himself amazing really he financed the project himself the, this guy here Paul uh, Brancato financed the project himself Doop, 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 doop. that guy really it's a mod party <laughs> when is the auction going to take the auction is going to take place uh, probably towards the end of the year right uh, what we decided to do crack is do a yearly auction uh, as a thank you for everyone that comes into these streams and it's basically you're redeeming your uh, points okay if people really want to when we do a comic book grading auction I'll put a couple of these on the side and people can bid on them uh, make an offer and we'll sell them as well um, right so we'll do that as well I got a bunch I got a bunch yeah wow this guy huge respect to this guy man huge respect to this guy this guy right there Paul Brancato huge respect he funded this himself dude huge respect huge respect huge respect huge respect I'm gonna make sure I put his name in the title of the videos that we're gonna upload uh, new status message uh, 
Uh, Ding Baba Chicho, a friend I knew from public school, one of the best hearted people I've known, is reach, uh, reaching my place tonight. He went to a different high school than me, but uh, we still kept in touch. Looking forward to his arrival. We're gonna drink, listen to music, and play darts. Awesome, awesome. M MTL, but how are you doing? Did you re um, purpose some old geophysics equipment to make the trip? No, no, this is a tripod. <laughs> good, good cash though. This is a tripod the family has had from the 1960s. I, I, I jacked it from my parents. I said, Mine, I'm taking it. They're not using it. Yearly auction, yeah, crack. Looney Tunes and Squad Criminals. The Iran Contra scandal trading cards. Yeah, I got those. Iran Contra scandal. That's one of the ones I I got. There's a coup d'état one as well. That's hopefully it's on its way to me. We're gonna do the Iran Contra reading as well, by the way. Okay, and gang, don't forget, free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see WikiLeaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org or our Julian Assange and WikiLeaks playlist and rest in peace John McAfee and hopefully Julian Assange does not get Epstein the way John McAfee did okay he was a crazy bastard but he stood for freedom he did st stand for freedom I didn't like some of the stuff he did uh, I would consider him a-hole however full respect to him right I don't have to love everybody or like everybody to have full respect for them for who they are okay Looks like we're all on the same page, BS. Fuck you, gay karma. <laughs> they were, I can't recommend. But please do research before you potentially waste your money. Gang, quick intro. I'm on Patreon. Gang, for those of you who support this work on Patreon, thank you for the support. It is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this, as well as the support that we're getting on Twitch. Okay, so gang, thank you for being here. Mods, thank you for taking care of business. I do announce these last streams 30 minutes before we go live on Mines, VK Gap, Parlor, and BitCloud. And for live streams where we don't have any visuals, we do right now. We do upload the audios to SoundCloud as podcast, and they should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and iTunes. And this live stream will be going on to SensorTube, BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. So for everyone that's following this work, supporting this work through those platforms, gang, thank you very much for the support. Let's take these guys down. Pizzler, how are you doing? Super hot week ahead of us. Super hot few days here right now in west coast of Canada. Crazy hot. Crazy hot, Pizzler. Think about our Chicho, please tell parallel parking expert not to buy into the dog coin hype. Uh, people can buy into whatever they want, uh, Ding Bobber. Uh, this isn't financial advice, but Ding Bobber, <laughs> parallel parking expert, is saying don't buy into dog dodge coin. Okay. Uh, electrolytes. Electrolytes it's so hot here right now our kitty cat they were outside just passed out and one of them wanted to come in and he had to go over the the area on the patio that had sun shining on it he went on there and it was so hot his paws were burning so he flew back and started licking his paws i had to go in there pick him up and bring him in that's how hot it is right now here that's how hot it is. Facet, my pleasure, my pleasure. Think about it. Fair enough. Just my opinion. It has no use case. It's a meme coin. Meme. It is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, BTC has no use either. B Bitcoin is no does not provide. Uh, I I'm not promoting Bitcoin either. Okay. Weekend at Barney's. Hey, Chicho, like, don't know. See, Weekend Barney's, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Oh, no. Oh, no, I know. He was so cute, though. He was so cute. Yo, what is that? Huck, how are you doing? Let's go. Does not mean you will either. Despair. 
Don't use crypto as a get rich quick scheme. Never invest anything that you aren't willing to lose. That's the best advice there is, right? Never invest anything that you're not willing to lose. That's my top crypto advice indeed. Padre, padre, padre. How are you doing, gang? I'm going to take these guys down. I'm going to take down the notifications from here. Here is going. I'm taking the chat down. Boink. I'm going to take the chat down here. Okay. Boop. I'm going to take my camera down. This is a BS pyramid scheme. Ba, ba, ba. I'm going to take my camera down and we're going to start reading these okay i'm gonna give a quick little intro at the beginning okay see you after the stream game or after we finish reading this hi everyone this is chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to a trading card reading and what we're going to do in this live stream we got our hands on a bunch of drug war trading cards the straight dope on, on america's dirtiest deals the trading card set that was put out in 1991 by eclipse comics okay it was put out by these guys down here eclipse comics or eclipse books and eclipse comics eclipse books is considered to be one of the most important and one of the greatest independent pu comic book publishing companies ever okay and they were functional i believe in the late 1970s very active in the 1980s and they went defunct in mid early to mid 1990s during the comic book distributor wars and looking these guys up because we did a reading of one of the comics which i'm going to show you right during the mid 1990s when they went bankrupt todd mcfarland bought their library for twenty five thousand dollars okay and this trading card set i didn't know this thing existed right i should have known this thing existed but i didn't know this thing existed and we found out that this thing eclipse comics put out trading cards and they were actually the first comic book publishing company to about to put out trading cards like this we found out about this through reading real war stories number two this is a series this this was just a two issue set that i bought in a previous comic book haul this is real war stories number one this one is real war stories number two and we did a reading of this comic we read i believe two or three of the stories in this one of the ones that we read was citizen soldier regarding sort of a anti-war peace activist group in the united states and i don't think they're around anymore um because i sort of looked this up but i don't think they're around anymore unless they changed their name and they were supporting uh veterans right and the other story that we read in this uh, which was really the one that really got my attention on this comic and why I bid uh, what I did to get this comic book haul it came with a whole bunch of other stuff it was a great deal um, was uh, Smedley Butler's War is a Racket sort of an adaptation of War is a Racket the book that we read during a previous stream sort of we did an ASMR reading of it with a overlaid with a little bit of mathematics right so we read uh general smedley butler's war is a racket and then we read the adaptation of general smedley butler's war is a racket in comic book format and at the back of the back cover of this comic we saw the advertisements for trading cars that eclipse comics had put out okay and we're gonna try to get our hands on all of them and read all of them this is the first one we're doing a reading for okay the drug war trading cards and the writing for this is done by by paul brancato and bob callahan and the art is done by salim uh Jakob. okay and editor catherine euro ron wood okay and eclipse enterprises p.o box 1099 
Forestville, California, 95436. Okay. In 1991, this was selling for 895 US and 1095 Canadian. And at the beginning of the stream, someone looked this up and they found out that Paul Brancato funded this project by his own money, right? So huge respect to Paul Brancato. And he's with the um, San Francisco uh, Symphony, the second violinist right now. He was the violinist in the San Francisco Symphony. So he funded this thing. And Salim uh, Yakub is a professor at a university and he's written multiple books uh, i believe since he put out these these uh you know the art for this he's written multiple books i believe it's the same guy on u.s foreign policy especially uh specifically in the middle east okay and we had uh, we were able to focus on this just before uh you know we got into this and basically this fine print here oh we've got to focus text copyright 1995 paul brancalo and bob callahan and the artist copyright 1991 1991 salim yokop okay fantastic and let's read the fine print here before we crack this baby open it should be able to focus after i was able to focus on this earlier there we go oh much of the information in these cards is covered in covered in greater 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 depth in drug wars corruption counterinsurgency and covert operations in the third world by jonathan marshall published by kohan and Kohan available at a postpaid price of fifteen ninety five from Eclipse Books, P.O. Box ten ninety nine, Forestville, California nine five four three six. Okay, so that's our quick little intro to this, and there's thirty six cards in this. Okay, let me crack these open or pull them out, and these are in mint condition, by the way, gang mint condition we're able to get our hands on a bunch of these 40 sets of these right so there is art okay done by salim yakup okay and there's a little write-up at the back of each one of these and we're going to do take a look at the artwork of each one and read the description in the back i'm not sure how many we're going to get through take a look at this one beautiful up and smoke that's number 36 so I put the number one up top okay but before we do that let's have a read through the little info card that comes with it okay drug war trading cars are meant to serve as an introduction to a most complicated subject in preparing this material the author consulted the following books the politics of heroin in Southeast Asia by Alfred McCoy, The Great Heroin Coup by Henrik Kruger, The Foreign Mud, Anglo-Chinese Opium War by Mar Maurice Collins, New Stories from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, The New York Times, The San Francisco Chronicle, and articles in Extra, Newsweek, Covert Action, Information, Bulletin, and other magazines were also used in researching facts okay. basically this is the way history should be taught in school okay. paul brancato is a violinist with the san francisco symphony and the author of three previous trading card sets the iran contra scandal bush league and coup d'etat the assassination of jf uh, kennedy he is currently working on two additional sets of trading cards, one of which, from Dallas to Watergate, continues themes introduced in Kutata. And just so you guys know, I already got my hands on the Iran-Contra scandal cards, which we're going to do a reading of. I don't have Bush League. Bush League is baseball cards. I've got, I've ordered or bought, is somewhere stuck in shipping, coup d'etat the assassination of john f kennedy 
so we'll do a reading of those as well and eclipse comic put out some other cards as well one of them is rotten scandrels which is sort of has a rookie card of donald trump and that thing sells for um, a lot as soon as i get some funds i'm gonna get my hands on that as well and i'm gonna do a reading of that it sells for a couple of hundred bucks that set okay if not more okay the artwork for this salim yokop is a freelance artist who collaborated with paul brancato on the iran contra scandal and bush league trading cards trading card set sets a graduate of san francisco academy of arts in 1986 his illustrations have appeared in san francisco weekly yoga journal the bay uh, guardian and the express okay and these are a list of the cards that they have right other current events uh, items from eclipse books drug war okay drug wars corruption counterinsurgency insurgency and covert operations in the third world so that's a book okay jonathan marshall timely iran contra scandal trading cards we got our hands on those rotten to the core new york city politics scandal trading cards uh gordon mulroney brent brandt kosher i'm gonna try to get my hands on those okay friendly dictator trading cards bernstein seidel sinkwalski we're gonna try to get our hands on those okay i don't have those bush league trading cards we will try to get our hands on those as well coup d'etat the assassination of jfk trading cards we got those guys coming to us i hope uh, brought to light more brought to light i don't know what those are graphic documentary based on the uh, uh crestic institute's investigation wow that would be cool el salvador a house divided by bill Pol tulp uh factual book and uh black and white comic book oh we don't have that real war stories number one we have that real war stories number two we already bought that okay we did a reading of it fantastic book okay additional sets of drug war trading cards 895 please add a dollar postage and handling per item very cool very cool gang let's take a look at these cards let's take a look at these cards this is my reading set so i'm okay with messing with these things right and gang before we start reading these which is very much related to everything that we're doing here all the discussion in this stream and many other streams free assange free assange free assange julian assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital's power to humanity for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on censor gang let's have a read through these trading cards declaration of war that's george w bush holding up a bag of cocaine or crack cocaine is evidence beautiful artwork let's read the description drug wars number one this is card number one in his first nationally televised address address from the oval office in september 1989 President Bush declared a $7.9 billion war on drugs. Brandishing a bag of crack cocaine, he called narcotics the gravest threat facing our nation. Quote, the greatest threat facing our nation. End quote. Every U.S. president since Richard Nixon has waged war on drugs. Yet today, they are more widely available than ever before. 
Bush's own involvement with drug wars began in 1971 when Nixon appointed him to the White House Cabinet Committee on International Narcotics Control. As Vice President, Bush was Ronald Reagan's drug, drug czar, heading the National Security Council's Drug uh, Interdiction Task Force. Spending uh, Interdiction Task Force, yet during Reagan's presidency, while federal anti-drug spending tripled, cocaine supplies soared tenfold. 1990 saw new highs in worldwide narcotics production. Bush's plan echoes failed policies of echoes failed policies of previous administrations. Over 72 percent of funds are allocated for law enforcement, new prisons, and inter interdiction and less than 23 percent for prevention and treatment the casualties of the war on drugs are mostly poor people of color while the real criminals bankers and businessmen who share the fabulous wealth created by the 300 billion dollar a year worldwide drug trade are rarely punished historically drug wars have been used by imperial powers as smokescreen for foreign intervention the u.s for the u.s this has taken the form of spending sending military aid to corrupt allies who use the weapons not not against drug traffickers with whom they are often in league but to crush their internal policy uh, political enemies meanwhile u.s agriculture and trade policies encourage production and export of deadly legal drugs drug war trading cars text copyright 1991 paul brancato art 1991 salim yukup eclipse entertainment p.o box and we know that now one of the stories here okay now keep this name in mind gary webb okay in this sentence here that you see yet during ronald reagan's pres presidency while federal anti-drug spending tripled cocaine supply soared tenfold okay that is not a coincidence or bad management that is the cia running drugs and we know this because of gary webb's reporting and look into the uh, investigative journalist in-depth investigative journalistic work that he put out called the dark alliance okay and gary webb was suicided epstein uh, he was basically assassinated for what he put out and he was blacklisted by the establishment by the so-called news agencies by the government and target it okay that's card number one this alone would be at least a couple of classes in any history class in any grade in high school okay let's look at card number two opium and empire opium and empire anglo-chinese opium war beautiful artwork look at that the chinese ships were a lot smaller eh That's why they got knocked around. Right? The British Navy. Opium and Empire. Card number two. When Britain conquered 
India's Bengal province in the mid 19 in the mid 17 hundreds the region's Patna opium came under the control of British corporate proxy the British East India Company China refused to accept English manufactured goods in exchange for tea and silk insisting on hard currency so each year the East India Company brought the entire opium crops and brought in brought the entire opium crops and smuggled it into china for chinese silver with which it legally purchased chinese tea the emperor of china viewed opium as a poison introduced by foreign devils to destroy his nation and in 1799 banned opium smoking and importation the british ignored the ban because opium financed Brit Britain's growing tea habit, 10% of Britain's revenue was derived from taxing tea. And the booming drug economy in Bengal provided a market for English textiles. Between 1773 and 1839, British exports of opium to China multiplied 30 fold. By the 1830s, after the British East India Company lost this monopoly, the smuggling trade was handled by firms like Jar Jardin, Matheson and & Company, and Dent & Company, who operated under British protection and bribed Canton officials to allow the drug, drug traffic. In 1839, the, Chin the Chinese again took a stand blockading shipping routes and confiscating three million pounds of opium one year's production but british naval forces backed by backed up by armed merchant ships destroyed all chinese resistance by 1842 following their defeat in the first opium war there was a later conflict in 1860s the chinese were forced to cede certain port cities to the British and could no longer contain the flood, flood of opium. By the early 1900s, there were 15 million Chinese addicts and China, which had begun its own opium cultivation in 1880, was the world's leading producer. card number two wow well this was card number one we didn't take a look at it again after we did a reading might as well might as well right George W Bush dirty 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 let's see the next one drug lord jesse helms jesse helms jesse helms look at this guy let's see Card number three, number one killer drug. Tobacco is the one drug of abuse in the US. 53 million, it, dr tobacco is the number one drug of you, abuse in the US. 53 million Americans are addicted to it. Tobacco is also the most deadly drug in common use. In eight, 1989, 1989 while 2,000 people died of cocaine use 390,000 died from tobacco even passive smoking breathing in other people's smoke causes 3,800 deaths a year 80% of adults who smoke want to quit but fully two-thirds of them have tried and failed tobacco use costs 
society 50 billion a year in healthcare, insurance, and lost productivity. As with alcohol, tobacco companies target low-income people. Some 35% of tobacco billboard, billboard advertising is placed in ghetto neighborhoods. Govern, government publicity on the hazards of smoking has resulted in 5,000 Americans quitting every day. Teens take up smoking at the rate of 3,000 a day, leaving a shortfall which has caused U.S. tobacco companies to aggressively expand their markets worldwide. It is here that we see the power of the tobacco lobby, led in the U.S. Senate by men from tobacco producing states like North Carolina, North Carolina Republican Senator Jesse Helms, to whom Philip Morris, makers of Marlboro cigarettes and Miller beer, as well as Kraft Foods, donated $200,000 for his successful 1990 re-election re campaign. In 1989, tobacco companies saw 20% growth in exports largely as a result of strong arm tactics by the U.S. government to force countries like Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan to open their markets to American tobacco or face trade sanctions. In 1990, Thailand, which has discouraged smoking for 20 years and forbidden tobacco ads, succumbed to U.S. pressure. It now allows U.S. tobacco companies to sell and advertise their products. And remember, this, this set of cards came out in 1991. So this is as of 1991, the history that we're reading here. Card number four, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. St. Valentine's Day Massacre. America's drug of choice. On January 19, 1920, the 18th Amendment became law, making alcohol illegal. Not only was prohibition unenforceable, the enormous profits generated by bootlegging creating an, created a new criminal class whose legacy flourished long after the law was repealed on December 5, 19, 1933. Though Chicago gangster Al Capone whose internecine, internecine St. Valentine's Day Massacre of 1929 symbolized the mob violence of Prohibition era, was in jail by then. Bootleggers like Lu Lucky Luciano, Meyer Lansky, Mo Dalitz, and Frank Costello used their ill-gotten millions to create legal liquor liquor empires and corner the gambling business and the heroin trade. Joseph Kennedy used his bootlegging fortunes to create a political dynasty. The violence during prohibition taught mob leaders the value of bribes over bullets and of cooperation between families of cartels. Eventually, both labor unions especially the Teamsters and Hollywood became victims of this powerful new national crime syndicate. Not only is alcohol use legal, it is often glamorized. Beer makers spend billions sponsoring major sporting events and linking beer drinking to athletics in their TV ads. Producers of high octane, low cost beers and wines like King Cobra and Tight Train Express target ghetto communities with special promotions, but the figures on alcohol abuse aren't pretty. Out of 102 million us users in the US, 18 million abuse or are addicted to alcohol, 
costing the US 120 billion a year in lost work accidents treatment costs and deaths each year 75,000 babies are born with permanent brain damage which can occur with even moderate alcohol use during pregnancy alcohol is a causative factor in one-third of out one-third of all accidental deaths and I believe the person here Joseph Kennedy we're talking the Kennedy's la dynasty right John F Kennedy I believe that would have been his grandfather I'm assuming maybe if I'm not mistaken and this is I believe Al Capone yeah and alcohol was illegal for 13 years in the United States I believe 1920 to 19 13 years 1933 incredible incredible right incredible incredible Card number five. Big ear two. Big ear two. Big ear two. He does have big ears. He's got a pretty big head too. Big ear two. Let's check out what the story on big year two is the green gang while rival warlords vied for power in the chaos following the 1911 fall of china's manchu dynasty the nationalist party of koming tang kmt joined forces with the communist-led labor movement after KMT leader Su Yat-sen's death in 1925, Chiang Kai-shek took over the party, and by 1927, the KMT army, bankrolled by Ch Chiang's close relatives, financier, financiers H. H. Kong and T. V. Sung, controlled most of northern China and was preparing to march into Shanghai. Communist labor leaders called a general strike to welcome KMK liberation from Shanghai's warlords. Not wanting to share power with the communists, Xiang turned to his old friend Tu Yong Xing, the head of a Shanghai secret society of triads called triad called the Green Gang controllers of the local heroin trade big ear too recruited and armed thousands of gangsters who brutally suppressed the strike and murdered most of its leaders the subsequent infiltration of twos thugs into the labor movement combined with financial and public relations aid from sung's american connections the roosevelt and henry luce publisher of time and life magazine magazines helped Chiang stay in power until World War II when the Japanese invaded and took over the drug traffic after the war the KMT and the Green Gang regained control but in 1949 Mao Su Tung's communists drove them out of China the Green Gang tried to move into Hong Kong but failed the KMT relocated to Taiwan but sent a large KMT army con 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 contingent to Burma where with CIA assistance they expanded the local poppy growing industry Xiang profited from Burma's heroin trade and enjoyed US government support until his death in 1975 long time warlord 
working for the CIA, with the CIA, staying in power with the aid of the CIA. Lucky Luciano, Lucky Luciano, Lucky Luciano. That's a great picture or great piece of artwork. Look at that. Lucky Luciano. And this is card number five, I believe, isn't it? Card number six, card number six. Lucky Luciano. Right? Lucky Luciano. It's got a little mole. Operation Underworld. Card number six. During Prohibition, Jewish gangsters like Meyer Lansky and Arnold the Brain Rothstein controlled the heroin trade, while Italian and Irish mobsters concentrated on bootlegging but in 1931 with the end of prohibition in sight the italian mafia led by uh, salvacor c luciano a.k. also known as lucky luciano forged an alliance with lansky and moved into the heroin business in 1936 lucky uh, in 1936 luciano was convicted of forced prostitution his incarceration in the U.S. combined with Benito Mussolini's crackdown on the Sicilian mafia, mafia was a major blow to the syndicate's heroin operations. But World War II gave the mafia a new lease on life. Concerned with German sabotage on New York's front waterfront, the U.S. Navy, through Lansky, convinced Luciano to enlist his gang in protecting East Coast docks. Luciano also arranged for Sicily's mafia to help the Allied invasion of Sicily in 1943. As a result of these successful operations, and perhaps aided by $250,000 in contributions, Lansky had given to New York Governor, New York Governor Thomas Dooley's election campaign Luciano was released by Dooley and deported to Italy in 1946. In 1947, intent on rebuilding their heroin empire, Luciano and Lansky met at Havana with the U.S. leaders of organized crime. Lansky was entrusted with managing the uh, syndicate's finances and negotiating with suppliers. Florida uh, mafioso Santos Traficat, Traficant Sr. was designated to run local heroin operations. Cuba became the major transit point for Luciano's heroin shipments, at first obtained by diverting Italy's legally produced pharmaceutical heroin. Italy author authorities, Italian authorities soon disrupted this source but by then there were new suppliers. Corsican gangs led by the G Girini brothers who ran heroin labs in Marseille. Lucky Luciano getting in bed with the US military and the Jewish mafia and helping the landing of Normandy, the invasion of Normandy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Marcel, Mar Marci, Marcilis Dock Strikes. Marseille, is it Marseille? Is that how you pronounce it? Dock strikes. Nice. Card.
card number seven the French connection so Marseille Marseille dock strikes the French connection and there's a movie called the French connection which is really good Marseille Marseille thank you all our God card number seven the French connection have we found the Sicilian Mafia useful during World War two the US government again turned to organized crime in its post-war battle against European communists in November 1947 wildcat strikes erupted all over France and in Marseille the vital port city which was the stronghold of French communists 80,000 striking workers paralyzed the city the newly formed CIA sent agents of a psychological warfare team there to meet with Cor Corsican underworld leaders such as Anton and Barthelemy uh, Dreamy. The CIA supplied money and arms to the Dreamy brothers to assault uh, for assaults on picket lines and union leaders finally breaking the strike a month later in 1950 another strike was similarly defeated leaving control of Marseille's dock to Corsican gangsters within a year Marseille's heroin labs run by the Dreamy Dreamies and others were in full operation by 1965 America's heroin addict addict population largely supplied by these labs had grown from 10,000 to 150,000 at first most of the opium supply for Marseille labs came from Turkey but as time passed Southeast Asia's Golden Triangle became the main source France had a colonial outpost there from 19 from 1890s until 1954 when it was replaced by the US as the colonial power in the region during the first Indochina War 1946 to 1954 French intelligence working closely with Corsican narcotics syndicates took over the opium traffic to finance their operations after the French left the Corsicans remained and until 1965 these syndicates led by Bonaventure Rock Francis Francisi who had ties with the Dreamies and his airline Air Laos Commercial Air Opium quote Air Opium provided drug transport to markets in Bangkok and Saigon and just a note regarding the US government uh, shipping weapons and providing training to um, the mafia in France to prevent that region from uh, unionizing further and you know getting adequate work and pay and compensation for their workers and uh, to fight against so-called communism that was prevalent at the time rising at the time this same operations are sort of going on in Mexico as well they occurred under the Obama administration in a big way look into fast and furious where the United States was shipping automatic and semi-automatic weapons supplying automatic and semi-automatic weapons to Mexican drug cartels okay during the Obama administration so this practice still continues to this day to this day card number eight my lovable fascist my lovable fascist yakuza in the background i believe Japan the map let's see where this takes us card number eight Wilbury and the Yakuza 
less well known than the C than the CIA collusion with Corsican gangsters in France and the US is the US military's use of Yakuza gangs in Japan the Japanese equivalent of the Italian Mafia Yakuza syndicates have controlled the rackets in Japan since the early 1900s long allied with the ultra nationalist right Yakuza thugs provide the muscle which suppressed the left and kept fascists in power during World War II. After the war, Japan was occupied by the Allies under supreme command for the Allied powers, General Douglas MacArthur. In 1946, MacArthur's G2 intelligence, intelligence Chief Major General Charles Wilbury began paying Yakuza criminals to break communist legs, leg strikes, and infiltrate labor unions. Born Adolf Witt Weddenbanch in Germany and called my beloved fascist by MacArthur, Wilbury recruited Japan's former chief of military intelligence, Lieutenant, Lieutenant General Sez Sizu Arizu to help run his covert operations and succeeded in freeing many class A war criminals. One of these men, Yoshio, Yoshio uh, Kodama, served as a liaison between G2 and Yakuza gangs and later worked for the CIA for 25 years. What the Corsicans, be, what the Corsicans be, became to the heroin trade the Yakuza became to the Asian amphetamine market, a monopoly they still hold. Amphetamines, speed, have been popular in Japan since World War II, when the most well-known military users of amphetamines were kamikaze pilots. Today, Yakuza have allied with Chinese triads in Hong Kong and Taiwan in global sales of heroin and speed. Together, they now market a smokable amphetamine called ice, common in Hawaii, but still rare in the U.S. mainland. Ice is cheaper and more potent than crack cocaine and could become the next drug epidemic. Card number eight. My lovable fascist. Serious dose of history. Wow, 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 wow. Serious dose of history. Chairman of the board. Chairman. The sun is shining on us. Chairman of the board. Chairman of the board. Who's that guy in the wheelchair? Look at him laughing it up, drinking it up. Where are they? Where are they? Let's take a look. Meyer Lansky. That's the person that we read about earlier in the previous card, right? Uh, the Jewish mobster in the United States Meyer Lansky the father of white-collar crime Meyer Lansky was the mob's financial wizard born Meyer Szczuczynski in 1902 in Poland Lansky came to the US at age 9 and by 1921 was uh, Lefitting stolen car refitting stolen cars and bootlegging liqueur. He soon entered the heroin business. In 1931, Lansky became became partners with Lucky Luciano, and during Luciano's incarceration from 1936 to 1946, he oversaw syndicate operations. After gaining Luciano's release. Lansky reorganized World War II in inter, inter, 
interrupted heroin business and set up a chain of banks in southern Florida, the Caribbean and Switzerland to launder drug profits. Lenski's investments associated in these banks included CIA agents, other drug lords, billionaire eccentrics, and Republican Party bigwigs. The syndicate's based base of operations was Cuba. Lenski had used the Caribbean as a smuggling base since 1920s when he cut deals with uh, uh, Bahamian and Cuban Cuban officials to ship bootleg rum to the US. After 1933, he and Cuban strongman Fulginko Batista, ooh, Batista were partners in several Havana hotels and casinos. When Fidel Castro overthrew Batista and kicked out the syndicate, Lansky oversaw the mob's resettlement in the gambling and resort paradises of Las Vegas and Bahamas. Luciano died in 1962 and Lansky assigned his Havana Lieutenant Santos Traficanta Jr. to run the heroin business. In 1965, Lansky sent his Swiss banker courier John Pullman to Hong Kong Settling the, setting the stage for Trafficant's 1968 meeting in Hong Kong and Saigon with Chinese heroin suppliers. New heroin resources created by the U.S. war in Laos had made it necessary to deal with Corsican middlemen. The future disruption of the French connection was already in the works. Wow, wow, wow. And that's why the United States government still has such a hard on for Cuba right and they consider the Cuban Revolution to be uh, one of the biggest threats to the United States because it cut into their main port of drug money with the mafias of the world right that's why Castro is so hated Very cool. That's card number nine. Card number ten. Look at this. Look at this. Who's that scumbag in the middle? Who's that scumbag in the middle? The great heroine coup. The great heroine coup. Who are those two other guys? Ah, oh, Traficante. That was the name of the guy. Card number 10. Traficante Nixon Gerini. Traficante Nixon. That's Traficante. Nixon and Gerini. When Richard Nixon became president in 1969, the heroin trade was dominated by the Corsican mob, which had been led by the Drini brothers until uh, factionalism put the Francis Fran Francisci Venturi gang in power. The New World Division of this empire was headed by Augusta Ricord a former Gestapo collaborator who operated from Paraguay. But before Nixon left office, the Corsicans had been supp uh, supplanted by the Sicilian Mafia. This coup was achieved through Nixon's selective war on drugs. By working to extradite record from Paraguay, by securing Turkey's commitment to halt opium cultivation, and by encouraging France's crackdown on the Francisci, uh, Francisci uh, Venturi gang, Nixon helped destroy the Corsican, Corsicans 
while leaving the Sicilian network intact. Southeast Asia replaced Turkey as the main source of heroin, and Santo Traficante Jr. unseated Richard a uh, record as the Western Hemisphere's top drug lord. From his Teamster Hall headquarters in Tampa, Florida, Traficante influence Traficante's influence spread widely. In the Lansky generated banks of southern Florida, his fortunes were laundered alongside KMT drug money from Southeast Asia and CIA funds for secret wars against Castro. The Tori Tori Torios government in Panama and the Nicaraguan Sandinistas. Traficante even had connections in the White House. When Watergate burst, it was learned that four of Nixon's plumbers had worked for mob-controlled casinos in Batistas, Cuba. Nixon's drug war also employed CIA-trained Bay of Pig veterans linked to Traficante's drug operations, with heroin supplied by Hong Kong's KMT-linked syndicates and with friends in high places, Traficante had had by 1973 built the most powerful narcotics organization in the world. In the world. Traficante. The great heroin coup. Card number 11. Our man in Laos. Who's our man in Laos? Who's our man in Laos? General Vang Pao. One of America's dirtiest drug deals was made during the U.S. secret war in Laos from 1961 to 1973. The CIA set up a secret military base in Laos, second largest, Laos's second largest city, Long Tiang, often called Spook Heaven. Air America, a CIA property, flew up to 400 flights a day in and out of Long Tiang in order to supply an army of 40,000 Hmong or Miao tribesmen, mercenaries with mercenaries who were fighting communist forces in northern Laos. The CIA supplied army was led by General Wang Pao, a major Laotian opium supplier. Air America transported his opium from Hmong villages where it was grown to market markets in uh, Vienti Laos and Saigon South Vietnam in 1967 the CIA helped Vang Pao set up his own airline named Zhang Quang Air Transport it was soon dubbed Air Heroin by the Air American employees who piloted the planes Vang Piao's original CIA case officer, Anthony A. Poshepsky, a.k.a. Tony Po, was transferred out of Langtiang after he complained to his superiors about the opium traffic. According to Tony Po, Vang Pao was, quote, killing, was, quote, was making millions because he had his own avenue for his heroin. We were giving him freedom of navigation into Thailand. They weren't going to Thailand. They were flying over to Dang Nyang and then President Thieu, South Vietnam's president, 1968 to 1975, would receive it. It was like a big organized mafia, end quote. A secret Department of Defense reports later showed that the CIA spent $60 million more in Laos 
than they got from Congress. Many CIA men who ran the uh, Laotian War uh, surfaced during the Iran Contra scandal, including Richard uh, Secord, Theodore Shansky, uh, Thomas Kleins, John Singlob, and Ralph Chichi Quinterino. Wow, wow, wow. So from the 1960s to 1970s, they leapfrogged into the Iran Contra scandal in the 19 late 1970s and early 1980s or 1980s mainly that's when it broke wow 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 our man in laos look at that look at that our man in laos look at that pretty smile look at that pretty smile bloody smile cia funded smile crazy 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 Kobe and company who's this who's this Kobe and company that's gotta be Vietnam the helicopters is it is it let's check this out the Vietnam drug war indeed the helicopters the sunglasses and the helicopters gave it away Right, the sunglasses and the helicopters. This is like the opening scene, Apocalypse Now. Right? Wow, wow, wow. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? The Vietnam Drug War. According to former CIA director William Colby, Quote, the CIA has a solid rule against being involved in drug trafficking. That's not to say that some of the people whom the CIA has used over the years may well themselves have been involved in drug trafficking, but not the CIA, end quote. Kobe should know from 1959 to 1972, he oversaw most major U.S. intelligence operations of Vietnam theater under undertaken in support of a series of drug cor corrupted South Vietnamese leaders like Neng Dinh Diem 1955 to 1963 Nyung Nyo Yin Kao Khe 1965 to 1967 and Nhan Van Tho 1968 to 1975 Diem's brother, Neng Din Hon No, head of South Vietnam secret police, guarantees safe contact for the Corsican run Air Laos commercial, uh, commercial to ship opium, opium from Laos to Vietnam. New used his profits to expand the scope of the secret police power. After Diem CIA sponsored 1963 assassination, Kai became commander of the Vietnamese Air Force, which in two years displayed the Corsican airline as the prime mover of Laotian opium. Kai also taxed opium shipments through his control of both the Vietnamese Customs Service and the Saigon Port of Authority. Those in Theo's intelligence chief, General Dang Van Quang, was by 1971, quote, the biggest pusher in South Vietnam, end quote, according to the NBC Saigon correspondent Phil Bradley. Kobe became CIA director in 1973. In 1976, he formally retired, but soon became a lawyer for the uh, Australian-based CIA-connected Nong Han Bank. There he joined forces again with several men previously under his command in Vietnam. Theodore Shansky, Thomas Kleins, Richard so Socord, and the bank's co-founder Michael Han. Kobe and company. Look at this guy. 
the guy who was running, working with the CIA and running the drugs was coming out and saying that the CIA doesn't do, doesn't, is not involved in drugs, drug trafficking. <sighs> it crazy, 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 crazy. Card number 13. I want you. I want you to enlist for the USA. This has got to be the soldiers all addicted coming back from Vietnam to heroin. The war comes home. GI junkies, card number 13. GI junkies. As a result of the of allying with Southeast Asian heroin dealers in the fight against communism, the US government created an epidemic of heroin addiction among American troops in Vietnam. At first this was a minor problem, as only low grade heroin was being produced in the Golden Triangle. But in nineteen sixty nine Chinese chemists went to Laos and began producing high grade number four heroin. As a cover for, for purchasing the chemicals used in the process, Chinese gangster Hu Tim Hing built a Pepsi Cola bottling plant in Vien, Vientiane, Laos, with money supplied by the US Agency for International Development. Wow! An official arm of the CIA, CIA. Hang's heroin was distributed by the smuggling apparatus of then Vice President Young Kao Kai. The heroin was flown to uh, Saigon by the South Vietnamese Air Force and sold by dealers, many of them teenage girls, at stands outside U.S. military bases. By 1971, 10 to 15% of low-ranking enlisted men were hooked wow gi's began shipping heroin to the u.s some going so far as to cut open the bodies of dead soldiers and stuffing them with up to 50 pounds of heroin per corpse between 1965 and 1972 the number of heroin addicts in the united in the states soared from 150,000 to 560,000 Keep in mind in the previous card we read that it was originally 10,000 and then soared to 150,000 now it soared to 560,000 in 1973 then president nixon formally wrote off 2,000 missing gis as dead when in fact many were pow's captured in secret wars in laos and cambodia in the 1980s british spy master sir william stevenson and Texan billionaire H. Ross Perot, wow, wow, investigated the fate of these men. They concluded at least 20 were still alive, wow, but found their search blocked by American intelligence officers still involved in heroin trafficking. Oh my God, this is Ross Perot, right? H. Ross Perot that ran for president in the 1990s, right? So in the late in the 1980s, he did an investigation with British spy master Sir William Stevenson and found out what American oligarchs and the American government was doing, which was not releasing the information of the 2,000 soldiers that were classified as POW, 20 of which that were still alive. Oh my God. I'll bet you a million bucks that this is never taught in any American history class anywhere in the United States of America. And you can find it on trading cards released by an independent comic book company called Eclipse Comics. And you could order it in an ad they had on there 
in a comic book that they released that's called Real War Stories Number Two. I'll say it again. If you want to know history, if you want to know what's going on in the world, get your hands on independent comic books and some of the mainstream comic books, and you will learn more history, more facts as to what is going on in the world in comic books then you will get out of any history class in the western world in school end of story wow 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 i had no idea ross perot looked into this stuff and that's the reason they demonized them some would say the first true one of the first true patriot politicians i guess right. who's this guy look at this look at this the cia's bankers also known as wall street and the big banks right who are those who are those people cox wilson bush aha he's looking at the cards look at this he's actually holding up a deck of cards like trading cards and he's got bush on there very cool very meta what is this the cards cia attack ha 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 wow 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 cia's bankers card number 14 the nugan hand bank what is this what is this january 1980 frank nugan co-founder of the australian based nugan hand bank was found shot dead in his car on the outskirts of sydney over the next few years the Australian government investigated the firm's mysterious activities. They discovered that the bank did not did, did no legitimate banking during its seven year existence. What it did do was launder money for many large Asian drug traffickers and arrange arms sales to several third world countries. The banks the bank's officials were mostly retired U.S. military and CIA personnel, such as Admiral Earl P. Yates, former chief of Navy's Pacific Strategies, General Leroy J. Manor, former chief of staff for the U.S. Pacific Command, General Earl Cook, Jr., and Edward F. Blank, Waller, Wal Walter McDonald, former CIA deputy director, William Colby, former CIA director, and Nugan's co-founder, co Michael John Hand, a former special forces operative in Laos, who disappeared shortly after the bank collapsed. Wow. The investigation showed strong links between the bank and CIA, bank and bank in hand cia superiors in laos theodore Shal Shan shackley and thomas kleins as well as with former cia and navy intelligence agent edwin edwin wilson wilson's longtime partner frank turpel turper turpel explained nuke's hands role in the cia drug wars in a 1983 interview quote where do the drugs come from laos who is the boss of clients shackley who were they coming from where were they coming from laos the pilot was sickord what was what was on the plane gold he was he was going to pay off the warlords the drug lords now what do you do with all the opium you reinvest it in your own operations billions of dollars not millions billions where did the money come from nugan hand there you go 
Wow, wow, wow. 1983 interview. The Australian connection. The Australian connection. Well, not really headquartered in Australia, but ran, uh, operated by CIA and US military, right? Retired. The same type of retired generals and US military that come on corporate propaganda news and tell you that the United States is winning the war everywhere and drugs are bad and look at this, look at this. And they're going into Afghanistan to save the women. Guns and poppies. This is gotta be Afghanistan. Guns and poppies. Look at this, look at this. Card number 15. Afghan Mujahideen. This is an amazing story, gang. If you've never looked into the origins of the Afghan Mujahideen, it starts off in the 1970s. Okay. And it's incredible it's incredible okay and very much the connected to what is happening in the world right now card number 15 afghan mujahideen after 1978 af after a 1978 marxist coup the government of afghanistan mounted an anti-narcotic campaign against the opium growing mujahideen tribal groups near the pakistan border as these fundamentalist muslims stepped up opium production to finance their resistance to marxist rule the soviets invaded afghanistan to prop up the government the cia used pakistan's military to funnel arms to Muja to the mujahideen rebel leaders shipped tons of opium out of the same pipeline in 1984, despite full knowledge of these drug deals, the U.S. pledged to give Pakistan's ruler, General Zua, Zua Ohag, $5 billion in military aid. Two years later, the United States Department admitted Afghanistan was the world's top producer of opium for export. Zai's chief minister, personal banker, and pilot were all implicated in the trade by 1988 when the soviets left afghanistan 100 heroin labs were operating in pakistan and as had happened to u.s forces in vietnam thousands of soviet troops went home hooked on heroin by 1989 southeast asia's asia's golden triangle had resumed leadership of the world's opium production by with Burma by far the leading source 2,600 tons in 1989 Burmese drug lord Khan Sa an ethnic Chinese controls the lion's share of this production and supplies the Hong Kong triads who make China white a pure form of heroin which counts for 70% of the world's supply. Wow. Burmese general Ni Win, the, uh, the Nori Noriega and Southeast Asia, the Noriega and Southeast Asia is on the take. His violent regime murdered thousands of pro democracy demonstrators in 1988. Assistant Secretary of State Melvin. Levinsky admits to uh, admits Ni Wen's drug dealing ways, but adds, quote, we have no plans for any kind of military action. It would violate another country's borders, end quote. <laughs> crazy, crazy. And this card, keep in mind, came out in 1991, right? In the 1990s, opium production in a huge way drifted back into afghanistan where afghanistan was supplying the lion's share of opium to the world by the late 1990s now when the taliban 
sort of the took over Afghanistan they destroyed the opium production in Afghanistan if you look at the numbers the charts okay in 2000 opium production in Afghanistan have dropped 2000 2001 opium production had dropped to a trickle in Afghanistan okay what happened after that was 9-11 and the US NATO invasion of Afghanistan and occupation of Afghanistan almost every year since within a year really opium production had basically gone back one to two years of the u.s nato invasion of afghanistan opium production have gone back to pre-taliban levels in the mid 1990s before at the end of 1990s when the taliban killed the opium uh, production there they had gone to that level and almost every year since opium production in afghanistan has been a record production year under nato occupation under nato occupation what is being described right now in 15 cards of a 36 set of cards of the drug war trading cards the straight dope on America's dirtiest deals okay is continuing to this day connect that up with the leak that came out from the Washington Post of all places where it shows that all US administrations that have come since the invasion of Afghanistan have been coming out and saying that they're winning win, winning the drug war have been lying to the American people that every administration knows that the war is unwinnable they're just there to occupy Afghanistan and one of the reasons they're there to occupy it should be clear by now is because the US military is the largest supplier of drugs in the world right as per Gary Webb's the Dark Alliance report that came out which basically is a must read for anyone that wants to understand what is going on in the world okay I just have to put in a little filler since these cards came out because uh, these cards were in 2021 right now they're 30 years behind I would love to see the drug war trading cards part two maybe someday maybe someday Todd McFarlane do you hear us Pan Am flight 103 Pan Am flight 103 Semtex Pan Am flight 103 let's see what this is all about death over locker locker wow 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 we're going into Libya I believe wow 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 card number 16 death over lockery investigations into who placed plastic explosives on pan am flight 103 which blew up over Lockerbie, scotland on december 21st 1988 killing all 259 people on board are still ongoing but the tragedy is widely thought to have been a terrorist attack on a u.s target at various times at various times stories have surface implicating Syrian President Assad Libya's col colonel Gaddafi Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini and Palestinian terrorist Ahmed Jibril in 1990 the DEA looked into claims that one of its agents had smuggled explosives on board believing it to be a heroin shipment part of an undercover sting operation in Interpol, an anti-terrorist consulting firm which undertook an investigation for Pan Am's insurance carrier, 
concluded that the CIA was warned that a bomb had possibly been loaded onto the plane in Frankfurt, Germany, but allowed the flight to continue to protect the heroin shipment by Monzer al-Khazar, a Syrian arms and drugs smuggler who had successfully negotiated a May 1989 swap of arms for French hostages. al Qasar had earlier received 1.5 million from Iran Contra figures, figures Richard Secord and Albert Hakim for providing 100 tons of arms for the Contras. The Interfol report named Army Major Carl's Mackey as heading an eight-member CIA team in Beirut who, while trying to uh, trying to do, 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 trying to gain release of CIA hostages had uncovered other CIA agents protecting al Qasr's drug pipeline in hopes that he would aid them. Mackey's team planned, quote, to bring the evidence back to the U.S. to inform the government and to publicize their findings if the government covered it up end quote at least five and possibly all eight of Mackey's team were aboard flight 103 when it crashed what hold on we gotta read that again the interfol for report named army major charles Mackey as heading an eight-member cia team in beirut who, while trying to gain release of U.S. hostages, had uncovered other CIA agents protecting al Qasr's drug pipeline in hopes that he would uh, he would aid them. Mackey's team planned, quote, to bring the evidence back to the U.S. to inform the government and to publicize their findings if the government covered it up, end quote. At least five and possibly all eight of Mackey's team were aboard flight 103 when it crashed oh my god i know a little bit about this I, i'm not gonna say what i've heard what i read about this this stuff was coming out way back when where they were trying to blame Gaddafi for the bombing and Gaddafi took the rap for it for a deal that he cut where the western government said that he they would not try to overthrow him as long as he took blame for the Pan Am flight and he take he did take blame for the Pan Am flight right so Western governments made the Libyan government Gaddafi the Patsies for Pan Am flight this thing is revealing a little bit of information that I never heard about Wow 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 holy kamoli Pan Am flight 103 oh. If these weren't trading cards uh, this would probably not go on censored to but they are trading cards from a comic book company and they're gonna go on censored to holy camoles card number 17 LSD and the CIA are we looking at Timothy Leary look at this look at this Dick Helms and Timothy Leary holy camoles holy there are so many discussions about who timothy leary is wow 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 let's read two more cards gang there's 36 cards in this and we're gonna do the next 18 later this is number 17 we're gonna read number 18 there's a vatican there we're gonna read that and we're gonna read this and then we're gonna call the stream because we're coming up to two hours for this game okay let's check this out card number 17 LSD and the CIA in 1952 the CIA began mind control experiments under the code name MK ultra the project brainchild brainchild of Richard Helms included dosing unsuspecting Americans with LSD that also should include Canadians they did it to Canadians as well 
this stuff came out later after this 1991 the US, US government settled with the Canadians that sued them uh, a few years ago the families okay so included dosing unsuspecting Americans with LSD some were permanently dis disabled but the experiments continued for 12 years by which by which time Helms ran the CIA's quote dirty tricks end quote department while Helms was CIA director in 1966 to 1973 the agency mounted a massive campaign to discredit the anti-war movement Helms destroyed most MK Ultra documents in 1973 so it is hard to know if the huge increase in MLC supply during his tenure was a CIA covert action but a close look at acid guru Timothy Leary whose quote turn on turn in tune in drop out end quote motto was antithetical uh, anti to the new left raises questions Leary's patron from 1963 to 1969 was stockbroker Billy Mellon uh, Hitchcock a session of the wealthy Melanie family Hitchcock in invest invested drug profits from the Brotherhood of Eternal Love a Leary connected LSD dealing motorcycle gang in mob link resorts international and at the bohemian base castle rank a cia mafia money laundering what <laughs> from 1969 to 1971 with leary's blessing ronald stark supplied 50 million doses of lsd to the brotherhood the gang was busted in 1971 but by then stark was in europe with their money jailed in italy in 1975 he was released in 1979 when the judge found quote a series of scrupulously unnumerated pro proofs end quote that Stark had been a CIA agent quote from 1960 onwards end quote Leary was jailed escaped to Algeria and linked up with alleged agent provocateur Edge Elbridge Cleaver he later returned home and served time by the 1980s he was touring the lecture circuit with Watergate burglar G Gordon Libby oh, my God. <laughs> crazy crazy this is a PhD thesis game PhD thesis these trading cards and remember the writer of this Paul Brancato provided his own money to do this there are a lot of well-intentioned Americans people in the world trying to bring to light what is happening to the world card number 18 gang we got the Vatican we got the Vatican connection coming in Pope who is this Pope this isn't Pope John Paul is it who is this DC lick the 16 I don't know who that was the Pope's bankers the Pope's bankers were into the Vatican oh my god I'm surprised this stream hasn't been cut off yet <laughs> no idea this thing was this intense oh my god thank you thank you thank you eclipse comics thank you comic book hall thank you real store war stories number two for hooking us up hooking us up and we're doing this the day before we do a politics live stream at 8 p.m. and we do a conspiracy live stream on Tuesday at 8 p.m. for those of you that are going to be watching this video or watching this video after this live stream you missed the politics stream you missed the 
you missed the <laughs> conspiracy stream but we'll be doing more of these and you wanna for these live streams i gotta do this gang this thing's so sweet you wanna join our twitch channel twitch.tv chicho live to get a feel for this dive as they're happening as they're happening okay let's check this out card number 18 scandal in the vatican and there are many in the early 1970s the banco ambrosino of milan italy was organized by robert calvi and michael sindona loyal members of propaganda do propaganda do p2 an italian or italo argent argentine neo-fascist masonic lodge whose membership also included some of the most important political military and business leaders in the post-war italy and argentina sindona was linked to both the cia and italian mafia so in addition to p2 funds the bank also handled heroin profits deposited by sicilian mobsters cia money for italian anti-communists and p2 sponsored causes and political campaigns and most dramatically vatican bank funds later used by calvi to purchase a series of panamanian shell companies which laundered cocaine dollars to finance p2 paramilitary dirty war activities in south america my god the vatican money was transferred to calvi by the head of the vatican bank chicago-born paul mar Sincos, a bishop known as the pope's banker while the vatican later denied knowledge of this involvement michel sendona flatly stated that mar Sincas had been kept informed by calvi all along and the vatican had been happy to embark on p2 new p2's new crusade calvi himself said nothing as alert to it in godfather 3 robert calvi's body was found hanging from from black friars bridge in london in june 1982 mar marcinkas was in indicted for, indicted for his part in the bank scandal but charges were dropped when italian authorities found it impossible to extradite him from the vatican in 1990 two former cia contacts contacts stated that the cia had paid p2 leader licio Gilli, mastermind of the 1980 bologna, bologna train bombing to uh, foment terrorist activities in italy G Gilli attended ronald reagan's first inauguration ball my god oh, wow 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 the pope's banker game the pope's banker that's the dude right there connected up with the vatican who wants to know what's in the dungeons below vatican city who wants to know what books they got there wow 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 that's the first 18 cards for drug war trading cards okay from eclipse comics that were put out in 1991 we will read the next 18 in a future live stream most likely in the next set of live streams that we're going to do without a doubt without a doubt and we will be reading more of eclipses comics trading cards because i'm finding this extremely extremely informative there's so much here that i don't know and i thought i knew a lot okay absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant and if i ever set up my own school 
I can guarantee you that each one of these trading cards will be a course that I set up for history okay one card per term it would take four months of a grade 11 or grade 12 course to go through this at least at least just the first 18 alone and then part two would be this okay gang we're live streaming this I'm gonna go back to the live stream for those of you that are gonna be watching this or are watching this on our secondary platforms thank you for being here and if you want to support this work we are on patreon we are live streaming on twitch i announce these live streams on minds vk gap parlor and bitcloud we upload streams that we don't have any visuals for to soundcloud as podcasts and we will be uploading this live stream to sensor to bitchute rumble and odyssey but if you want to watch all of our content you want to be on bitchute rumble and odyssey because everything does not go on sensor to aside from that gang thank you for being here for the live stream i'm going back to the chat and i'm going to turn on the chat the notifications and my video hello gang what a amazing amazing trading cards amazing trading cards holy cow holy cow i think we have a shocked audience brother oh god i'm shocked this was blew me away i read a couple of these before the i couldn't hold off I, I read two of them but I didn't like I skimmed I read a couple of paragraphs but holy cow best stream ever park parallel parking expert wow so good uh, seriously gang one of the greatest buys I've ever done okay and I'll let you know this we bought 40 of these mint condition right I love them so much I went back to the same seller and I bought extras they're on their way here because people were really interested in getting these and I want to make sure we have enough for the next few years to auction off to send to people okay had to be done had to be done had to be done had to be done such a welcome surprise girl forest how are you doing i hope you're doing well amazing amazing man this is what the the gems in life that you find right some of the gems in life that no matter what you think you know how good something is going to be it ends up surprising you and it's better it blows you away right phenomenal elder god i notice a lot of connected streams in the card yeah and th these cards like it's referencing the iran contra so the iran contra cards are related to these guys so we're going to put out a whole set of these things man i gotta get my hands on all of them i gotta get my i gotta build up my funds a little bit some of the cards are pretty expensive the sets i, I gotta build up my funds and i'm gonna try to get my hands on all of them okay did you buy it from eBay or a specialist seller eBay I bought it on eBay and as far as I'm concerned they're going on the cheap right right now you could get these sets for around ten dollars US not eight to ten dollars US including shipping right I ended up buying the set as a as a as a lot right uh, in bulk and including shipping it ended up costing us three dollars a pop each set one of the greatest buys ever <laughs> i came in an hour in and didn't expect this in a comic hall can't wait to to uh to listen to the beginning ah awesome awesome uh, lu lubush orn yeah we we do some we do as as many interesting stuff as we can 
uh, we got a few comic book readings in our belts this is the first trading cards that we're reading by the way but we have a few comic book readings and we've read some amazing stuff amazing stuff right those are some cool trading cards yeah MC Mike really grow for a genius way of spreading truth genius way of spreading. in high school right this came out in 1991 not a word of this was the truth of this was taught to us in high school history it was all garbage what we were taught in high school history all of it right you had to read independent sources of news independent books books that like and read comic books to be able to get the truth right twitching jason gonna have to re-watch this later i literally just tuned in at the end a twitching jason you're gonna love this stream you're gonna love this and thank you for the bits by the way now the god the truth is found in the most unexpected places and places where information is not censored which is why we have to make sure censorship does not take a foothold in our societies because if censorship takes a foothold in our societies this will be banned right this will be banned this will be wiped from human history okay no censorship that's why you have to go to independent publishers and creators right people who are not paid propagandists right to be able to get the truth of what's going on in our world okay mc mike you only get partial truth at best from mainstream media unfortunately yeah mainstream media will corrupt your soul mush your brain turn you into what malcolm x warned you if you're not careful the liberal mainstream all mainstream corporate propagandists will make you praising the oppressor will convince you to praise the oppressor and hate the oppressed right elder god i was out of school by 1991 and uh and i was reading my own knowledge yeah twitching jason i basically just walked into a room with everyone freaking out and i have zero context i've i've missed tur tuning into these streams oh twitching jason you gotta get into these ones mc mike math and staffs helped me develop a better bs detector indeed mc mike me too me too and gang if you want to be anti-fragile you want to be resilient first order of business learn your mathematics learn math second order of business stop consuming anything from mainstream corporate propagandists okay in terms of news and information okay when you're consuming their entertainment consume it if you want be warned if you're only consuming that you will be brainwashed know what you're consuming if it's propaganda recognize it for propaganda it's okay to still enjoy it but appreciate that it is propaganda and this is in in turn partially destructive partially destructive gang we're over two hours let's call the stream thank you for being here again i'll say those of you who are supporting this work on patreon gang thank you very much for the support i hope you're enjoying the content we've got many more years of this to do oh god i love the timeline that the cars covered and all the connections were a three letter agency all the connections were three letter agency two hours and eight minutes we've been going gang on twitch thank you very much for being here mods thank you for taking care of business we're on mines we're on gab we're on parlor we're on bitclout and we're on gab we're on soundcloud this will go on sensor tube but if you want to consume all of our content you want to be consuming joining bitchute rumble and odyssey aside from that gang tomorrow night current events eight p.m pdt my time that's monday night tuesday night two days from now conspiracy live stream 8 p.m pdt 
my time Wednesday morning late morning 11 a.m. I believe we're going out in the patio most likely we're gonna smoke slogies or drink liqueurs and talk about life whatever it is we're talking about okay elder god last month standing awesome <laughs> so if you can make it we got three more streams coming up and i hope to see you guys and thank you for being here will the vod stay on twitch uh only the segment where i'm doing the reading because i'm cut it the full live stream because i'm not a partner yet i'm an affiliate or whatever it is full live stream twitch takes it off but i'm going to cut out the segment where we do the intro to the card and read the card cards up to the point where i came back to the live stream that will be beyond there okay so the vod will be on twitch for uh two weeks i think twitch uh kills it in two weeks okay you're trying to kill me chicho for me on stream i know how they got sorry <laughs> sleep brother i'm gonna be doing my current events so i can watch the watch the chat as well and take action if need be twitching jason i'll definitely check it out either way wherever it ends up awesome gang i'll see you three more streams who can make it bye everyone